Hello, in this video, I'm going to be talking about a new class of cancer treatments called antibody drug conjugates. I'll explain what they are, how they work, and then some specific antibody drug conjugates used in the treatment of breast cancer. Before I go on, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to our channel. We put new videos out a couple times a week, so there's always something new to watch. And you can always go to yerba.com to get your personalized report. You have antibodies all over your body really soon after you're born. And if you're breastfed, you actually get antibodies from your nursing parent. Antibodies fight infection, and they also, by attaching to a very specific protein, can be targeted to a particular target, such as a cancer cell. When an antibody is conjugated or combined with a drug, it's called an antibody drug conjugate. Now, the drug in this case is something that kills cells and is a cytotoxic drug. It's toxic to cells, and the Greek root for cell is cyto. So we take the antibody and we connect it to the drug, and then we can deliver that drug right inside the cell that has that antibody. So it's a targeted treatment, not the kind when we talk about targeted therapies, this is a subset of those targeted treatments that actually delivers the drug inside the cell that has that particular antibody or protein. And then when it gets inside, there's a linker that gets cleaved and the drug stays inside the cancer cell. It's really remarkable. A lot of the language used around antibody drug conjugates relates to weapons of war. So the antibody will deliver a payload or there's a warhead. I personally don't resonate with the language of war and a lot of people don't. So women, a lot of particular racialized groups do not like the words that evoke um, ideas of war, but that's what it's called. If you read about it, you'll see um, words like payload and being delivered to a target. It kind of makes sense why that language would come about, but not all of us like it. There are, of course, side effects because really every medication has a side effect, and I'll get more into those in a moment. But these are an exciting class of new drug that are being tested, not just in breast cancer, but in other cancers as well. People with advanced breast cancer have cancer in other parts of their body. And in general, when new drugs come out, we test them in people who have disease that we can watch shrink. So this is somebody where we know they need treatment, they want to get treatment, and we can measure the effectiveness of the treatment. In early stage breast cancer, we can also do that in people before surgery. We know they need something to shrink the tumor. We know they're gonna get chemotherapy or other treatment afterwards, and we can watch the tumor shrink. That's generally how we test things in breast cancer. We do have a video about how we move drugs through the approval process that might be helpful to watch and goes into that in more detail. So back to antibody drug conjugates, there are three I'm going to talk about, and these have all been approved in people with advanced breast cancer. TDM1 has been approved in the treatment of advanced breast cancer in, tumor, in people with tumors that are HER2 positive, whose cancer has gotten worse after trastuzumab and a taxane. Taxanes include paclitaxel and docetaxel, the brand names of which are Taxol and Taxotere. So somebody has HER2 positive advanced breast cancer, they've already had trastuzumab and one of the taxanes, taxol or taxotir, and their cancer's gotten worse, they can be treated with TDM1. Now, what generally happens is we start moving treatments earlier so that somebody would not have had to had progression or worsening on these two drugs. We tend to move it earlier and earlier once we are really familiar with the side effects and who responds. The next antibody drug conjugate, or ADC, I'd like to talk about is TDXD. And we have the full name right here on the screen. 
This drug has recently been approved for people with HER2 positive metastatic or advanced breast cancer whose cancers progressed on two HER2 directed treatments. That might be trastuzumab and pertuzumab, for example. So when somebody who's had both of those treatments and there's cancer, their cancer has gotten worse, they can be treated with this new drug. The third antibody drug conjugate I'd like to talk about is called SG, and it has a very long name, which is listed right here. You might hear it called by its full name, or you might hear it called SG, or you might hear it called by a brand name as more uh, development happens in the drug creation world. This drug has been approved for people with triple negative advanced breast cancer who've had two other treatments that didn't work. So it's called third line treatment. So SG is a new antibody drug conjugate. You know, these new drugs have often been in development for a decade, but it's a newly approved drug in the treatment of people with triple negative breast cancer who've had a first treatment that stopped working, a second treatment that stopped working, and this will be their third treatment. So we have three drugs, antibody drug conjugates that have been approved for the treatment of people with advanced breast cancer. What about antibody drug conjugates in early stage disease? Well, in people with HER2 positive breast cancer who have treatment before surgery, and then at the time of surgery, they're found to have residual cancer, meaning cancer is still there, even if it responded. It's either in the breast or the lymph nodes. TDM1 has been approved, and many other drugs are being tested in HER2 positive, breast cancer her two, uh, and in uh, estrogen receptor positive breast cancer. So watch this space. We're just going to see more and more antibody drug conjugates being developed and available for breast cancer of all types. I did just want to spend a moment talking about side effects. Side effects include low counts like low white cell, red cell counts, low platelet counts, uh, the antibody drug conjugates can cause nausea and diarrhea and constipation. Sounds a lot like chemotherapy, doesn't it? And can also cause hair thinning or hair loss, as well as the other types of things we think about with chemotherapy like rashes and other problems. So we want to be really careful in selecting people for these drugs because they can have serious side effects. The same goes for chemotherapy, of course, but you might be able to see from what I just said why we use this in, sp in particular types of settings, particular types of people and diseases until we show that the benefit is greater than the harm. This is why we start drugs in the advanced setting where we can watch the cancer shrink and where people are you know, on board with treatment and there's not sort of this uncertainty as treatment of benefit or not. Covered a lot in this video, I hope it was helpful. If it has been, click like. That helps other people who are interested in antibody drug conjugates find this video. If you subscribe to our channel, you'll get alerted when we put out a new video, and we do that a couple times a week. You can go to yerba.com to get your personalized report, and as always, you can drop a comment or a question below. Thank you for watching.